In this video, we'll look at 15 editing tricks that pro YouTubers use to make their videos impossible not to binge watch, starting from amateur to the most advanced. We'll end with the ones that have impacted my channel the most. And I've learned these lessons way too late myself. Turns out, trying to shortcut my editing time by one hour still takes four days of editing. Super excited, click publish for it to go blah, three views. Who knew that one little hour can be the difference? So I present to you number one follow the eyes okay what eyes essentially if you want to punch something in that means zoom in quickly do it in a way so the viewer doesn't have to move his eyes this could take some guesswork because you never know where they're looking at but if there's a face in the video it's most likely the eyes so aligning the eyes like this makes for a smoother transition because the viewer doesn't have to do any work stretching those eye muscles to move their eyes nice number two the ken burns effect who? It's slowly zooming in or out basically. This can make pictures or screen recordings more exciting and alive. It adds movement to the video and makes it seem like something is happening even though it's not. Number three, when objects move faster than your eyes can track them in the real life dimension, there's always a motion blur. Adding that to animations or quick moving elements on the screen can make them feel more real and pleasant to look at. If you're using Premiere Pro, you can apply a motion blur to your animations with the transform effect. Use a 180 degree shutter angle for the most realistic blur amount, then set up the keyframes and there you go. Number 4. Audio is 80% of the video. You can see by this example here because you can't hear anything. See? Removing breaths, silences and background sounds from your audio is going to make it a lot easier for your viewer to listen to. But you can take this a step further. It's pretty hardcore, but by overlapping the ends of sentences like this, you can remove that tiny amount of space in between them, which eliminates the possibility of viewers' thoughts wandering away during that split second. Fun fact, if you want to learn how to make your amateur audio from your iPhone sound more professional, I have a 30-minute course about that on Skillshare. I'll leave a link to it in the description right below the like button. <laughs> Number five, Pope in the pool. Number six, if you want to, no, just kidding. The Pope in the pool technique refers to showing something interesting or shocking while explaining important information. It comes from a screenplay called The Plot to Kill the Pope, during which the Pope swims in the pool while being explained a bunch of important information. Instead of presenting dry facts to your audience, come up with your Pope in the pool. Disguise the necessary boring information while feeding them with interesting visuals. Number six, set up open Open loops. Open loops are stories within your video that get interrupted by something else. By opening a loop, you give your audience something to anticipate. Just don't forget to close the loop later. Movies do this a lot. They show you something that seems irrelevant at the moment, but later that thing becomes the key part in the story. Here's an example of an open loop in one of Veritasium's videos about IQ tests. At 55 seconds in the video, he explains how he's going to take an IQ test, but he doesn't immediately do it. He moves on to explaining something else relevant to the video and only shows the result of his IQ test at 27 minutes 35 seconds in the video. His IQ is 215 kilograms. He opens a loop for the viewers to anticipate something and stay watching longer and he closes the loop by the end of the video. Also, there can be multiple loops opening, overlapping and closing within just one video. Number 7. Your intro is where most viewers will drop off. It's the depression curve. But sound effects, sorry, but sound effects are a great scroll stopper. Here's a good example. I want to start to buy a failed million dollar business and then did you notice how many sound effects there were? You can use the free YouTube audio library to pile down sound effects in your intro or pick up something like an epidemic sound subscription for a more professional and wider choice of music and sound effects. Not sponsored. Number 8. Relax. Take a break. This was weirdly a game changer for my channel. Taking a break, breathing in and breathing out and re-watching my video on the day of upload allowed me to look at it with fresh eyes. When I'm in the editing mode, I often 
miss subtle details and the bigger picture overall. So when I rewatch my edit a couple of hours or even days later, it's almost a 90% chance that I will find something I missed. Number 9. Use text to emphasize key points. It's so hard for our brains not to read text when it pops up on the screen. We just love it. Using text to emphasize key points can help you drive them across better because the viewer will not only listen to what you have to say, but also read it on the screen. Putting text on only important parts of your sentence helps highlight key points of information and also it's less work for you because you won't have to subtitle everything. Number 10. Show, don't tell. It's a lot more powerful to see something rather than to listen to someone talk about it. You can showcase something you're talking about with stock footage or record your own b-roll. It's a fish. There are so many creative ways to show something you're talking about even if you don't have footage of it yourself. You can use stock videos, draw something on a piece of paper, do a screen recording, let AI generate the visuals for you, draw in Photoshop, use an image with the Ken Burns effect, see the previous tip, and so on. If you're going to go the boring route, which is stock footage, I recommend Envato Elements. They have a pretty large library of stock content, not sponsored again. Number 11. Use Bezier keyframes. What? When using keyframes to animate text or elements in Premiere Pro, the default setting for those keyframes is linear. Linear keyframes mean that your animation will start and stop abruptly, like this. To fix this nonsense, you can right-click on a keyframe, choose Temporal Interpolation, select Ease Out for the first one and Ease In for the last one, and now the animation is very smooth. Of course, this maneuver is very annoying if you want to do 300 animations, so there's a handy keyboard shortcut that you can set up for this. I have my comma key set to Keyframe Temporal Interpolation Ease Out and Period to Keyframe Ease In. Basically, whenever I have two keyframes, frames, I can just select one, hit comma, and it sets it to ease out, and set period, and it sets it to ease in. Now speaking of keyboard shortcuts, number 12 is setting them on the left side. If the shortcut is on the right side of the keyboard, you will either have to move your left hand over there, or let go of your mouse and use the right hand to press it. And that wastes time. Not a lot of time for one video, but that time adds up drastically across 30 or 100 videos and hundreds of hours of editing. And here are a few of my favorite shortcuts. S to split a clip, F to delete a clip, X to ripple delete, D to enable or disable a clip, Q to cut out everything before the playhead and move everything else to its place, W to remove everything after after the playhead and move everything in its place, shift Z to go to my project panel, shift X for effect controls panel and shift C for the effects panel. Yeah, there's many. And this video is sponsored by me. If you like the way I edit my videos and you want to learn how to make them from scratch in your bedroom, I put everything I know about YouTube in my YouTube video course which you can find in the description. Thanks for me for sponsoring this video. 13. Use pattern interrupts. they are things that interrupt the flow of the video, like curveballs that come out of nowhere and surprise the viewer, keeping them at the edge of their seat. It can be a sudden stop or change in background music, a quick zoom in, a sound effect, new element popping up on the screen, anything that disrupts the flow. 14. Don't show everything. Human brains are extremely good at filling in the details. For example, there's no need to read out the text that you put on the screen as a title, you can continue and your viewer will read what's on the screen automatically. A good test for whether you need to show something or not is to cut it out and watch the video. If it makes perfect sense without it, why leave it in? Sometimes leaving things out on purpose can even create some intrigue. Now unfortunately, none of these editing tricks work for YouTube Shorts. It's weird because they're like complete opposite of normal videos. The worse they are, the more views they seem to get. So watch this video next where I'll show you how I managed to pump up my channel with Shorts views within 6 months. Weird flex, but okay.